there's an enriching uh, process where kids uh, at this school see art as part of the real world, not just something that happens in school, finishes in school and then they move on. It's something that they grow with. It's a very collaborative environment. We got to talk to each other, talk to the teachers. There was no real pressure to do any specific thing or, you know, go in the same direction as everyone else. Um, and I think that allowed me to feel comfortable leaving school um, to go out and enter the arts community on my own. You know, I see the kids in the community quite often and they always come up and talk about what they're doing, even if they're not doing an art, they'll say that they're still drawing or they've started painting. And um, it just gives you that sense of, uh, wow, it's working. Like when you went on excursions, like going to gallery spaces, or when we went interstate to like Sydney, and they would remember, they'd be like, oh, this student, Pantelis was doing this, and I remember that he wanted to go in this direction, or maybe you can go look at that building over there because it has this cool stuff, or Melanie really enjoyed drawing, or oh, there's this part of the exhibition that is really focused on drawing, maybe you can go look over there. Like there was always you, the student, like in mind, and they knew what you wanted to do, mm. and were willing to like give you that material to grow. One of the general visions for the, for the arts course, which is now called um, uh, Visual Arts and Innovation, is to look at contemporary arts practices. We uh, work in a, a range of high level traditional art materials, but now we are branching into uh, contemporary equipment that would be normally called text studies. So combining the two, we're giving the kids a lot more options to see what contemporary art is in society. Being able to have that ability to just work with random ideas, like a teacher gives you a piece of paper with like a, a fish, a fish on it, okay, yep, like I know, I know what to do with this now, like, like you're ready to go, like 100%, mm. and it really like carries over into like uni stuff, because I remember in our foundation courses, they would give you like one class, like a 15 minute lesson, and be like, okay, you have to make this one thing like go and I'll give you like paper and clay and all these things you know like, I don't know what to do but because we're so used to having that weirdness that on the spotness on the spotness right, yeah. at Seton High School like I feel like being in that space where you had to create something super quickly we well, will do really really well because we have a range of teachers involved with that program they bring their practices from that program into their general classes. It spreads as uh, teachers develop and as the program gets richer. One of the other good things about Seton was the teachers because they're all so passionate. Everyone has their own little discipline but they're so willing to listen to you and they're so willing to contribute their own ideas like you never feel like you never feel judged with the students but you never feel judged with the teachers because they've all got something different to offer. You've got teachers who are a little bit more eccentric um, and will throw certain ideas at you or help stimulate your creativity. And then you've got teachers who understand, you know, structure, like how to help you structure your practice and structure your work. What we do within uh, Seton uh, High School's visual art program is we look at art from a lot of different uh, perspectives. Such an eccentric space. It is definitely an eccentric space. The amount of weird things that come in and out of that room is absolutely ridiculous, but in a good way. In a really, really good way. In a good because way. Because it fueled your brain. Like you didn't think these things were possible until they came into that space. Then you're like, okay, like this is it. Like I can work. I can work exactly. with this.